Hey guys, so I'm here with Kathleen Fillmore. Uh, I've recently worked with her a bit on my book and on my skills as well as marketing as a speaker. Uh, she's been very, very helpful for me, uh, extremely so actually. And I wanted to invite her to this podcast in order for her to share some of her wisdom. So you guys know that I'm an introvert, you know that uh, I'm a business owner, but also one of my biggest passions is speaking. And that's exactly why Kathleen is here. Uh, to help us get our message right, uh, learn how to market ourselves better as speakers, uh, and tell a bit about her story and why she thinks that speaking is the best thing ever. So can you introduce yourself quickly, Kathleen? Oh, hi. Thank you so much, Robbie. And um, I really loved your book, uh, by the way. And uh, I love the way your mind works as well. So uh, it's fun to Thank work you. with you. Um, Speaking is, um, I got in, I kind of fell into speaking. I'd been teaching English as a second language to refugees. And um, I met someone um, who was out there speaking and uh, getting paid for it. And I thought, well, that's a different way to share my, my, um, my gift, you know, my, what I have to say. And uh, I'm an introvert too, but the thing about introverts is we've got something to say because we are thoughtful people and we can hold an audience. So we may not dance around the stage like other speakers do. There's just two different types of speakers and they're both very, very successful. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Nova Scotia as kind of a career change to write a book um, in uh, late 1990s and um, ended up starting the Canadian Association um, of uh, Professional Speakers, uh, the Atlantic branch. It had already started in Toronto. I'd been to three mem three meetings and that was enough to get it started in Nova Scotia. I was still going and uh, then I really got into the field and I learned it so much. And as a constant learner, that's my greatest joy is to learn and learn. And I learned so much from these extroverted people who were just such exciting people to to work with and, and help. So that's how um, I got started in the field and I never looked back. I'm still doing writing, but fundamentally I own a speakers bureau and, um, and I also am a marketing consultant to speakers and help them develop a platform. So that's, uh, that's where I am right now. And I'm in Toronto, Ontario now. So let's say, uh, let's say, somebody who's listening to this is a business owner or aspiring to be a business owner and they're asking themselves right now um okay what what does this have to do with me why am i why should i listen to this i'm not a speaker i i'm not even sure i'm going to be ever going to be a speaker uh i think you beg to to differ on that right Oh, I, I do really, because I've never really been a speaker, but, it, but the thing is, if I've got something to say, you can't stop me from speaking, period. Like if I've got something to say, and I do, but a lot of things, um, I'm going to speak because it doesn't matter. It's not about me. The thing about speaking is it is the sphere of highest influence. And, and we mentioned uh, um, Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, who's is, who's an introvert and perhaps doesn't love getting up there speaking, but when he speaks, we all listen to him. Uh, so it is the sphere of highest influence, no matter what you're doing or what you're in. Uh, everyone listens to a speaker and their wisdom, and they have an elevated perception of speakers, unlike uh, they have of writers, but uh, they really admire speakers for sharing their wisdom. So I think it's a field to... Um, to explore. And, and what I love about it myself personally is that, Robbie, you're never going to come to me and say, wow, Kathleen, I'm now the top speaker in the world. Because mm -hmm. actually, there's no such thing. So what's great about that, there's always someone better f than you in some way. And so what's great about that is it's a constant stretching exercise. And I think as business owners, as marketing people or, or whatever we're doing, we like to have that stretching exercise. You just keep growing and growing and growing and you never get there. How wonderful is that? You are always learning at the same time. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Right? For me, the, the biggest challenge in speaking, um, I guess there are two main challenges. The first one 
was what do you do when you speak in front of an audience and you just really, really, really don't know um, what to say or how to, how, to, how to feel or how to think and you're just stuck there in front of the audience and you just feel like um, I shouldn't be here right now but everybody's, everyone's eyes on you. It's too late, you can't escape. Um, and I've had my share of experiences where I've literally got so scared that I was just hung up on the, on the, on the speaking gig. Um, that's my, one of my biggest challenges. And the second one is how do you, how do you continuously grow your audience? Because uh, I get bored very quickly. I mean, I'll be happy to speak in front of 100 people, but if I speak in front of uh, 20 people, I'll probably get bored at this point. And frankly, I, I'm not sure how to get 100 people to, to listen to me. So what do you think about those two points? Well, I think there are two, those are two very creative and different types of sabotage that we're talking about here, frankly. <laughs> but they uh, would, uh, one last quick point. Yeah. It usually it would usually happen would, they would usually coincide maybe that's why i said them together what would yeah. usually happen is i'd set up an event 50 people would sign up or 100 people and then 10 or 15 or 20 would show up and i'd be so disappointed that i wouldn't want to be there mm -hmm. that maybe mm -hmm. maybe they're related somehow well i had a friend I, I used to do seminars and also talent showcases as well and uh, one time at a seminar hardly anyone showed up but a friend who i used to work with in the prison system talking to to prisoners said to me i just always honor whoever is there so whoever's there is meant to be there and you just honor that one or two or four, three or four or five people it's not about you Mm. that's the thing it's a really important thing to understand it's not about you and if you get um scared and paralyzed and, and mess up and who doesn't do that every speaker bombs at some point it's a very humbling experience and every speaker recovers from it mm -hmm. but but you can guarantee that at some point you'll bomb yeah. And you just have to make sure that um, that you have a backup. I used to, since I'm so scripted as a speaker, I have my speech all written out. And so at the bottom of the podium, on the little shelf in the podium, I would put my entire speech in case someone had a heart attack in the audience or whatever, and I would be disrupted and, and frozen. So I always had my whole speech there. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was my safety gauge, right? And it really helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you, you really have to tell yourself before you go on there, it's about what you have to give to the audience, which is a lot. And be vulnerable. Tell them. Tell them if you're scared. You have to not only deliver to the audience, you have to receive the audience. You have to make yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The best speaker I ever heard um, messed up terribly like uh, he went with a whole sheaf of papers uh, and you kind of thought maybe drop some along the way when he went to the podium and for a sold out luncheon at that the at a, a, a ritzy club in toronto mm -hmm. and uh it, it was um and and he didn't look at the audience and there were no hand gestures at all and he just kept reading and reading and on, the, on page three i thought oh my god he's going to lose this and on page four, it was as if he'd been struck by lightning. Because on page four, he stopped caring about how we were going to react to his speech. Mm. He was a lawyer who volunteered to go into Guantanamo and, and rescue someone who had been arrested when he was a child. And he felt that wasn't fair. Many people disagreed with him. And so he was nervous for three pages, a extreme introvert. And on page four, he stopped caring and just told us why he did that and why he cared and what the conditions were like and so on. And it was riveting and he got a huge standing ovation and probably many people there didn't agree with him, but it didn't matter. That was just, that was the most amazing speech I've ever heard. It was electrifying because he was completely in the zone. Do you see what I mean? He had to completely give up uh, any attempt to control the crowd. Yes, 
and and in fact, who was what was he doing but judging himself, anticipating judgment and judging himself and being worried about that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and but if everyone felt that way and everyone bowed to those fears, there wouldn't be many great speeches. And how how do you find that that electrifying message? Because it, it seems I have a lot to say. I have a lot of ideas, a lot of experience, but then when it actually comes time to to give the speech, sometimes there's this voice inside me that just says, that's not good enough. You shouldn't talk about that. Uh, you know, no matter what I think about, it, it's like, that's not the best, That you shouldn't be talking about that. And then I'll ask my conscious, like, okay, what should I talk about? And it will just say, well, figure it out that's not it though and hmm. then, and then if i try talking about it in front of the audience i'll just feel fake i'll just feel like i'm rehearsing something that uh that's not really coming from the heart well i think as you get more experience in this field and as you get perhaps a little more scripted that you know how many points you want to make about what topics and so on because i think you kind of go in there a little bit with stream of in of consciousness mm -hmm. um and uh, so i think when you're more scripted you'll know what belongs in there and what doesn't because you'll practice ahead of time and so on and, and you'll imagine the audience there but honestly it's not about you it's not mm -hmm. about you um, you're just the vehicle that is giving the message, right? And it's about them and the value that you bring to them. And if you have, and if something pops up, they, oh, talk about this. Oh, well, that makes me feel vulnerable. There's nothing more powerful in today's world. And thank you to Brené Brown for bringing this to the forefront than being vulnerable. Mm. Part of that most brilliant speech I've ever heard, and I've heard the best in the world, um, was was that uh, he was vulnerable. He wasn't polished. He wasn't practiced. He was nervous. Mm -hmm. And it made it all the more powerful that he was brave enough to do that anyway, right? So just admit it. You do have to receive the audience as well as deliver to them, right? Yeah, the, uh, you're right. It's too, it's too self-centered. It's, uh, yeah. it's not thinking about the audience. It's me, me, me. Yeah. And your that ego you're... lies to you all the time. You need to understand your ego lies to you all the time. So don't listen. Right. Is that your argument for why you want to have a scripted speech, at least as a backup? Instead oh, for of being sure. Like, you know, I'll wing it. It's okay. I don't need to rehearse. Oh, oh yeah, but winging it's never a good idea. For one thing, it's really hard to sell. And for me as a third party, I could say, well, Rob, he's really great. No, trust me. No, trust me, he's great. No, listen to me. Wait, he's really great. But if I don't have a platform, then I don't have anything to promote, right? So it's a certain discipline to create a platform as a speaker. And that consists mm. of your bio, uh, your photo, of course. It consists of the groups that you've spoken to, what they've said about you, what their feedback has been. But most importantly for me, as, as fundamentally a writer, um, it's your message, right? Mm -hmm. um, someone who just had incredible wisdom um, and uh, and global knowledge of of companies and, and countries and and what's going on with different countries around the world and a hugely successful business um came to me but he he didn't really have a strong platform so i, I said to him when your platform is better it's easier for a third party to sell you right so if people yeah. come to you they want you already and it's not a hard sell but for me i have to say well he talks about this and that's so powerful and here's the benefit you'll get. So mm. you put your speeches on a promo page and you need five, well, anywhere from three to five bullet benefits. Here's mm -hmm. how you benefit. Here's how you benefit. Here's how you benefit. It's always a good idea to put that benefit right in the title of your speech. Right. And, so one woman the, I worked with, uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I came up with a title for her because she was promoting uh, women uh, in, in retail at the very high end of retail, like head of HR and 
PayPal, those kind of people. Mm -hmm. And she was launching in New York, uh, but she didn't really have a title for her launch. So I said, well, how about born to disrupt dot com and you get the dot com this very moment that was well before the the me too movement uh but it made all the difference for her you know and uh so now you say born to disrupt oh what's that about well it's about women rising right Mm. and then you're going to read on and say now you're engaged you see i've touched the heart now now you need to appeal to the intellect here's what you'll learn here's what you'll learn here's how you'll gain Here's why this matters. And you, that's basically do you, what you do. Do you think when you are creating your message that you should start with the message you want to promote and then find people who are interested in that? Or do you think it's better to start with an existing audience and custom tailor a message to their interests? Well, you can do both to a certain extent, but uh, I was working with a woman who's very well known in the tech world and and she's got an amazing story and she's already a pretty big name, but, um, uh, but, but she, when we were working on her platform, she kept saying, well, here's what this group needs. So I'll speak about this. And I said, don't try to fit into the market chart your own path so i think you need to go into your heart and Mm. say okay if i had three minutes left to live what would be the message that i'd want kathleen to get out on my behalf so robbie if you've Mm. got three minutes left to live what would you want your daughter to know your wife to know what would you want your family to know what would you want your colleagues to know and and when you boil that message down it's like simple words, like live a better life, like care about people, whatever, know who you are. Um, it's nothing sexy, but then you know what you stand for. And that can be built into a really strong message. Well, what would this mean to, to mm. the tech world? What would this mean to the manufacturing world? Uh, because this is a fundamental message. So you just go drill deep and know what your fundamental message is to the world. What do you care about most? And then you dress it up for the market. Damn, that's, and the, uh, that's powerful. Yes, because that also identifies your market, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. These are the people that you attract anyway. These are the people you attract anyway. Well, I would think, yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, that, that's really good. Uh, like pardon the language, but it, it really cuts through the bullshit when you, yeah, when you ask that question, because I, I like that it's limiting. It's like, you got three minutes. I'm like, oh, crap. Uh, and I'm thinking for like three seconds, like, okay, two minutes, 55 seconds uh, remaining, uh, better come up with something. And uh, that's good. And when you said, uh, when you said your daughter, that, that really hit me. Great. Right? Like what message would you have? Because honestly, these days, the good thing about COVID is we have all been confronted with our own mortality, which we love to deny. But but now we're taking a deeper approach to life, right? Mm. And so what would that message be? And it's required us all, I think, to be a little more introspective and reflective about things. I remember talking to someone on the phone years ago and I'm easily bored like you are. And he was talking about customer service. And, you know, I'd, I'd rather you swore at me, Robbie, than said things like the engagement, customer service. I mean, like, I can't stand <laughs> that language. I can't stand it. <laughs> and so, so I, I, I've lost my patience a little bit. And I said, look, you've got three minutes left to leave, live. There's a tornado behind you and it's coming for your house and you may not survive. I'm fine here in Toronto what's the message you want out to the world? And he was really taken aback. And he kind of, after a long pause, he mumbled something about customer service. And I said, you've got two minutes now and you don't give a damn about customer service. But you can see like his fundamental message was probably about caring about other people, which could go to customer service, but he just couldn't get to the fundamental of that, right? That, that's not what he would talk about if he had three minutes left to give a message well, to can you. Can you imagine? I mean, some oh, people, oh, I guess, daughter, would. Oh, dear. 
<laughs> your daddy stood for employee engagement. It's like, what? <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of, uh, the, did you watch Friends? No. There was, uh, so there's a character there named uh, Chandler Bing, and he works at, a, at an office, like the, the typical uh, corporate office in the 80s and 90s. And all he did was the was uh, reports. So um, the whole joke about that, the, his job is that everything that he would ever talk about is like, how's the reports doing? Oh, they're doing good. How's the analysis on that report? And I, I can't for the life of me remember what they called it, but but um, it, it was all about data. Like it was in the, like there was no life to it. It's just how's that number doing? Oh, that the number is great, Chan, uh, Chandler. Fantastic. Did you give me the reports about that number? Oh yeah, that number is doing very good. Uh, like like wow. zero life. And 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 wow. that's that's what I've been feeling, by the way, as a business owner. Um yep. the more my business grew, uh the harder like it when you reach the certain point uh in your business growth, uh it's it's hard to not look at um at 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 whatever's happening below you as numbers, because when you have five or 10 clients, you know, there's Dave, there's Bob, there's Jill, there's Harry. Uh, when you have 150 clients, you don't know the the first name of half of them. Yep. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit harder to, to, to find a soul. And I guess, I guess your, your question about the three minutes to, to live in your message, uh, like that's beautiful because that that's something that's actually scalable. That's a message that works when you talk yeah. to one person, but it would work in front of a million people as well. Yeah. And also you'll always know what you stand for because you'll get a bad gig. Um, mm. I mean, think of, think of the people who had to speak on September 12th, 2011, mm. right? Um, th they had to throw out their speeches and come up with something really deep and meaningful for people. They kept the engagement, right? Uh, so, uh, but mm. you'll, you'll have a time where, where you've opted into a gig where people are having drinks after dinner. You mm -hmm. don't want to do that because they won't pay any attention. They just want to socialize. They, they, they don't know you and they won't pay any attention and it'll be a rough gig, right? There'll be times when you say, why am I doing this? You always want an answer to that question, right? I think, uh, I think it's actually a beautiful question to ask yourself. Uh, just like the three minute question is to ask yourself, uh, let's say I had a, a speech prepared and 9-11 happened. Would that speech still be relevant the day after? No, not no, but all. no, but, but, um, can oh, you, right. can you connect deeply enough with yourself to yes. find a speech that so speaks to the spirit Absolutely. that it would be relevant the day after? Yeah. Like, like that's a sign you've got impact when you speak. Yeah. yeah. That's, I guess, I mean, wow, that, that really, uh, I mean, that really helps. Cause I, I, I've done a speech a few weeks ago in front of about 130 people. And it was one of the best speeches I ever gave. And I was like, why, why, why is it that, that this speech, like a full hour flew by and literally they had to stop me. Cause I, 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 I was, it was too long. I thought I was slated for, for 40 minutes. I had to go through 10 topics. By the 30 minute mark, I've been through two topics out of 10. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and they're, they're, and they're like rushing me. They're like, Robbie, you're almost done. I'm like, what? I thought it was like 10 minutes. And they're like, no, you've been speaking for like 35 minutes already. Um, so yeah, that, that, that really, like that really explains it to me because that's a message that like, that was the message for my daughter, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That was what I would like to leave to her. Well, but sometimes all you have time for is a, a sentence or a word or a phrase, and that's what you want to go after. And you never, never want to go over. It doesn't matter how brilliant your speech is. Uh, if, if we're if we're having lunch at twelve o'clock and you're at at twelve and five seconds afterwards, we don't know how much longer you're going to go, and we are disengaged. I'll tell you. And so would you be, and so have you been. Mm. So it's really important. I mean, that's where the discipline comes in. You keep your time. That's, that's a professional, right? Nice. Yeah. And always, uh, 
And if you're going to go overboard, make sure to let them know when you're done, when you're going to be done. <laughs> well, just say, you know, oh, I just wanted, I just want to leave one final note with you. If you're okay with this, it'll take two minutes and so on. But, but you have to honor them. Yeah, because they've opted for a certain time and leaving them wanting more is not a bad idea. Mm. And what is, what is the best, what are the best ways you found for somebody who's a speaker who, who wants to be a speaker and they have some experience but they're not they don't have traction yet they're not uh, known as speakers yet uh, they've just done it a bit they know they're good at it but um, they still don't have their audience what would your advice be for them on on the path to building those first thousand fans right well, as you and I spoke uh, uh, just before, you know, j just um, th your speech and your message should probably define your audience. So the guy who cared about people mm -hmm. and called it customer service, well, then customer service, if, if that message could be turned into something useful in customer service then he he'd know like retailers need him and so on and so on mm. uh and and so it kind of defines your audience and it should be a paying audience it should be a healthy marketplace and it should be a diverse marketplace as well right and mm -hmm. once you have defined your audience then you reach out to them um you can reach them through their magazines by posting an article. Uh, you can reach them online uh, doing the same thing and and sharing your wisdom with them. Um, you can offer to do a free event when you're starting out, and that's not a bad idea until you're comfortable that you're a good speaker until you and and you've gotten good testimonials about that. But I, I sure wouldn't stay stuck there at all. Um, I, I, I would create a platform and go out there as a paid professional speaker. And determining your fee mm -hmm. is an interesting question because if you go too low, you hurt yourself. I have bid on uh, on uh, booking mm -hmm. pr book proposals where I've been the lowest bid and I didn't get it for that reason. Same thing for the speaking world. Lowest bid, say, oh, well, how good is that, right? Um, highest bid, same thing. You might say, okay, well, then I'll put my bid high. But if you don't have the material in the background and, and, and the experience to support that, mm -hmm. um, you'll lose that as well. So you've got to find that sweet spot uh, in terms of uh, fee levels. And they're all over the place these days. And this new market is, is wild. I mean, some pay less for virtual events. Uh, some pay the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be very interesting in 2021 for sure to see how this unfolds because it's not stable yet. Mm -hmm. It won't be stable for another year and then we'll see trends starting to come that no uh, virtual event, here are the fees that you can get for that and here's what's out of line. And same with in-person events. I imagine that the fee mm -hmm. for in-person events will go up. Frankly, mm -hmm. I think so. Because they're more uh, just supply and demand. They're they're more rare, so they're more rare, yeah, and they're more treasured, right? We really appreciate the speakers right there. I mean, that's a huge value. So in this new in this new uh, post COVID economy where everything is, you know, if it was moving digital quickly, now it's uh, ten times faster. Um, so how do you navigate? as a as a zoom speaker or like do you do you immediately go to try and sell it uh does that even work in today's uh market where you know you can go to youtube and search for a video about anything um should you start off by charging for your online speeches or should you build an audience first uh, what, what would you recommend well, you should you should charge. You're not credible if you don't charge. Frankly, I mean, how much do you value free? Not that mm. much. If you're selling a program, then you give out free stuff to entice people to come and and get your program, perhaps. But when you're selling a speech, it's a different thing. So you have to put yourself there, out there as a professional, and and you have a fee attached to that. 
and you talk mm. to other speakers and see what they're charging if they'll tell you uh, but most most speakers are charging about half the fee mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, in europe it's different i talked to someone the other day uh, and he was charging five thousand and i looked at his material and i said uh it should be twelve thousand five hundred i mean so um you know that would be my assessment based on on his material and what he had to offer uh but but there are different markets so the market you really want to approach is the north american market um mm -hmm. the u.s market it's the highest in credibility mm -hmm. and it's going to be hit on like crazy soon mm -hmm. but they've got such a COVID thing going on there i would start out looking at countries like australia new zealand and so on who are economically i think in better shape because they haven't had such a uh, um so much covid so mm -hmm. such high stats so um so mm -hmm. you'll you'll know i mean start out small I mean, but don't stay small for very long once you get credentials once you get testimonials from people who heard your speech mm. speak go out there and charge from day one and charge from day one. And the other thing about the U.S. market, while I think it's kind of tanked in a way, uh, because of, of uh, you know, just such a no cry about COVID. But the thing is that um, they don't take a sitting down. I mean, that is one mm -hmm. entrepreneurial country. And partly the reason for its great entrepreneurialism is that um, they don't get as much government support as we get in Canada, for example, or as you might get in Denmark and in other countries, uh, mm -hmm. they have very little. And so in my view, so, yeah. um, so I think they, they really, really have to feed their children. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be entrepreneurial. And so that's a good side effect of what I feel is, is not great policy, but uh, that's a good side effect. So they are the best marketers in the world as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned um, and uh, they mm -hmm. will come back because you know mm -hmm. you've had a lot of money and you've also been without money and when you're without money there is an itch in you that says oh my god like enough of this right yeah, yeah. and you will rise from whatever depths you've gone to and you will earn money and that's mm -hmm. the U.S. so you kind of personify that um, that culture, in a certain extent, to a certain extent, so they're going to be itchy to start hiring speakers and start saying, "Well, what the hell? We're going into that, but we're going to do this anyway. We need it as a company." And I think that's probably a smart decision. Our, uh, I mean, our company started at the beginning of COVID. Uh, we were having, <laughs> we were like me and my partner were like celebrating every day, and everybody was like locked down, depressed. Yeah. Yeah, businesses shutting down, and we're like, "Oh my God, this is a boom! Like everything's amazing." Yeah, uh, because um, yeah, I mean, it takes uh, it takes a special kind of crazy uh, yeah. to to thrive in this economy. Uh, but I know for me, because I'm kind of messed up mentally, I've, I have like a really weird mental background. The more chaotic things get on the outside, the more I'm I'm calm on the inside. Uh, because because um, it's more of a uh, of a, a natural state of being. If if you look at nature, nature is not organized. It's organized in its systems, but but it's 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 a jungle, like literally. And and um, the the animals that survive the best are the ones that are like extremely adaptable, and you could like throw them anywhere, and they'll you know they'll do great. Yeah. These animals, you put them in a in a cage or you put them in a in a house the, they'll die of boredom they'll start messing things up <laughs> right and i mean it's so interesting i mean COVID has been a gift in the sense that it's cre we are all more flexible so like if um if i have to break a routine that that i've had for 20 years or something i said that's no big deal to me anymore at all like i think oh yeah that's fine i need to do it this way not that way and so i think it, it's been a gift to us in in many many ways and i think that uh, 
that mm -hmm. for someone with your skills, it is mm -hmm. just really great. All you need to do is just add that little layer of discipline as well and structure and uh, um, and add that to your speech and, and you'll be just amazing because this is one field where you don't want to break all the rules. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that was if there if I had one Achilles heel is that uh, I'm like the best person at screwing myself over uh, because yeah. I what would happen is I would do something it would work and because it works you know success is is not exciting because success is exciting on the first day but success creates commitment so every time you succeed in something it creates uh, habits so if you had a speech that went really well, there it's more likely that you'll do the same speech tomorrow. Um, and so every time I, I gained any level of success, I just ask myself subconsciously, like, how do I mix it up so that there's chaos again? And um, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've destroyed my progress because of this habit. So I suck at message consistency. I'm well, really but, but but you're also learning, you know, I mean, the thing is, you have to understand that your greatest strength is also can also be your greatest weakness at times. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so things just turn inside out and, and your greatest weakness can end up being your greatest strength at times. So, um, mm -hmm. so we live in a world of duality. So there, there's there's sabotage and everything. And then there's also greatness in everything. And uh, you just need to get away from the drama of the sabotage, right? Because you love a challenge. There are other ways to find a challenge. It's a challenge raising a child. Trust me on that. <laughs> and uh, so uh, so you can turn that into a challenge and and, uh, and and not rely so much on chaos to to do that for you because there's a little bit of sabotage in that as well. And also chaos can get exhausting, not only for you, but for other people. Yeah, that's why I've always had a, a lot of trouble keeping an audience because, um, I mean, just look at my YouTube channel. It's got like 600 views and it, it shifts constantly. It goes from uh, business coaching to life coaching to just general vlogging to philosophy. And and there's no um, there's no consistency. So anytime somebody starts to follow me, they're like, oh, I like this guy's content. They can't go back because the the past is different. And yeah. then next week I'll decide to do something else and they'll uh, they'll lose interest. So I'm gathering, yeah. I think I'm like, I have one of the worst uh, like subscriber to to view ratio. I have almost 4,000 subscribers um, and I recognize almost all of them. And many of them followed me in different times in my life. Many of them became customers paying me thousands of dollars. Um, but I kind of lost them due to both inconsistency of uploading as well as inconsistency of messaging yeah and 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 that's why i say discipline because honestly uh, uh those of us who really love our freedom uh the truth is discipline feels a little like a street jacket right but the truth is we need it those are parameters and unbridled curiosity and stream of consciousness is not going to sell and it's only going to confuse other people because you're talking to yourself basically. Mm -hmm. So you need a structure around that. And if it feels confining, well, then that confinement is exactly what you need mm -hmm. to modify your personality, right? Whereas uh, so yeah. many people, most of the world needs need to break out of confinement, but you, people like you and me, mm -hmm. we need to adopt some of it. Mm -hmm. That's why, um, yeah, because I'm I'm a creative uh, person, and obviously you are as well. And mm -hmm. um, like the best analogy I've heard is the the canvas idea that if you had a canvas without borders, it would it would not work. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean that's like I'm married, and I I hate being married, but that's why I love it because it's yeah. not, not, not that I'm romantically like interested in other people, but more in the sense that it's uh it's, it's limiting like you have to account for somebody else you have to live uh you have yep. to make decisions together you can't go with any crazy idea you've got same thing with my business partner you know i uh, i can't just do anything i want i have to 
consult with him and he might yeah. strike down an idea that I really want to go for. And, uh, but it's like, um, I'm like, uh, it's going to sound funny. I'm like gas. Like if, if it's contained, then it kind of bounces off and, and continues the momentum. But then if you release the containment, it just spreads off into nothing. So I need, I need to push back against something to like, I'll, I'll be like, like to my partner, like Nadav, I, I, my schedule's too packed. I need to free it up. I don't have time for creative stuff. And then he'll help me. I'll free up my schedule completely. And then I'll like diddle around for a whole day and yep. not do anything. Yep. And you need that pushback. You need to push against something to, to be uh, creative. So I guess it's the same thing for me with, uh, with being consistent in my messaging. It's like, like suck it up, stop being selfish and, and start putting some, bo some borders or else uh, you, you're not, you're never going to be able to consistently help a, a growing audience of people. Well, you won't reach the place that you want to reach and you're a very gifted person. So that would be a shame, right? You just want to fly as high as you're able, right? You want to complete whatever your mission is in this life and, and um, and unless you stop putting blocks in your own way, trust me, life will put them there for you. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. need to do that yourself, right? And so unless you stop that, you, I'm doing that limits uh, the, the growth that uh, that you can achieve. With uh, with your with your story and your um, kind of rise as a as a consultant for speakers. What would you say is the biggest thing you've learned personally uh, throughout your experience? Well, I so enjoy hanging out with these amazing people. And, um, you know, sometimes they can, the field attracts people who are a little bit egotistical, but honestly, I don't work with people like that. I work with thought leaders who are thoughtful people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that um, what drew me towards it is is, is just uh, the great experience of, of meeting all these different people around the world who are so accomplished and so amazing. And I help them stay steady in, in, a, in a very fluctuating field, right? And uh, what the future holds for speaking, it's hard to tell, but I will tell you this, the future holds speaking. It does. And so there will mm -hmm. be lots and lots of opportunities for people. And I think you just have to start by going inside and finding out what you really care about and why that should matter. The best, um, the best um, guide I ever had was at um, UNB writing school where I went for the summer and I would read my precious words to him and he'd look at me and say, so? Mm -hmm. And I would be furious, what, do you, what does he mean so? But then I thought, what a brilliant question. And so, you know, when you're writing your speech, when you're delivering your speech, well, not when you're delivering maybe, but when you're writing your speech, <laughs> say, so who cares about this? Who cares? And you really have to be honest with yourself and ask yourself that question. Who does care about this? And uh, if you don't have an answer, then you write another speech. Beautiful. Or you go deeper. What's, or you uh, go deeper and find hiding? the answer. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Do you one last, one last question before we uh, wrap up? So, do you, have you been feeling that the world has, uh, you know, you said speaking is the future, and, and I agree extremely. Um, do you feel like the world has sort of started splitting into silos where? In the past, uh, you know, we would all have some common stuff. You know, people would all be watching the news together. People would be watching TV together. And uh, do you also get the feeling that it's almost it's almost like um, everybody kind of finds their niches? So you know, you could like uh, card games and and uh, personal development, and you tend to gravitate towards like one, two, or three people, and you just listen to those people all day long, religiously, and that's like your only source of, uh, of media. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've noticed also? Well, 
I have to some extent, but on the other hand, we're also more diverse than we used to be. I mean, I grew up in a city, mm. small city in New Brunswick, and um, everyone in my family had blue eyes. And so whenever we had a reunion, it was like looking at a seawall. Right? <laughs> and and now um, I have a, f a family that uh, that all my grandchildren are... are um, are, are come from different cultures like uh, Chinese and Philippine and, and uh, Latino and so on. And uh, to me, it's made the world much richer. But I, but you see, in the older days, people didn't move away from their parents because their parents had no one to look after them. And mm. so once once the younger generation was able to move, then the younger generation got a whole new education that the older people didn't. And so I think now we are such a diverse society that mm. while there are silos within that diversion, still there's enormous diversity. So if you're going to be racist, where would you start? Right? <laughs> yeah, where would it, you start? It, 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 and, almost, it almost feels like, um, like in 20, 30 years, none of us, like everybody would be like enlightened or something. Oh yeah, and so I, I really think that uh, that that we are moving um, towards that. Frankly, I think that uh, every generation improves on the other. I know that when I was growing up, uh, fathers did not take time to watch to take their children to school. No one took their children to school. The children just found their way, <laughs> and and um, there were certainly no seat belts or anything. So I think that. The way we treat children is via the government restrictions and so on and has improved so much. It tells you where we're headed, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I love it. I mean, it's, um, there's never been a time where a person with an idea and a passion can go so quickly from just being nobody to having a huge audience, um, living off of their passion. Um, it's, it's, it's like so accessible today, uh, yeah. that it's crazy. Uh, the only, the only challenge is, uh, conveying that to the, you know, younger people. I mean, I, I talked to my, to a good friend of mine who's a business owner and, and I was like, do you realize that at the, at this point where we're at and, and we're like 26, 27, like I told him at this point where we're, we're at, uh, it would it would be extremely easy for us to build a lifestyle where we work like two hours a, a month and make two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, like it's a matter of like sitting on it over a weekend, coming up up with a plan, executing yeah. it, and give it a month or two, and you're there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's really beautiful. Um, Kathleen, uh, where can people find you, and who should uh, who should look for you uh, if they like this message? Well, I have um, a, a newsletter uh, that's sent out by email. I've got quite a following on that. So if people are interested, I don't pitch on it. I just uh, give them good advice on what I see going on in the market right now. They mm -hmm. can sign up for that by um, emailing Kathleen with a C, C-A-T-H-L-E-E-N at mm -hmm. speakers with an S, on both ends, speakersgold, G-O-L-D, dot com. And, uh, and I'm always happy to have a discussion with anyone. And, uh, you know, it's my way of giving back to the community that's been so good to me. I'll have a quick discussion with anybody and uh, give them good advice. And, and uh, I'm also happy to discuss the possibilities of, of working with people. I don't work with a lot of clients uh, because of, uh, I've got some other things going on, including the, the bureau, which is is most important. But but mm -hmm. I'm happy to uh, to do that as well, or to explore that as well. So yeah, and you you've been uh, and you've been amazing to me. I mean, we we met like what like a week ago, I think, via a cold email. And right. uh, yeah, you you you've been a gift that keeps on giving for sure. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, and uh, I appreciate uh, the interview. That was really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Kathleen. I'll make sure to 
put put a link in the bottom so people can't like they can't sign up just by filling a form or something they need to email you manually um well they can sign up um on my uh on my website speakersgoal.com for sure if they if they're interested in the newsletter or if they want to approach me uh directly that's fine and my phone number is 416-532-9886 if they want to call Beautiful, beautiful. It, it's just, it's the only sad part is that uh, nobody ever calls. Um, <laughs> I, I used to be scared of putting my phone out there until I realized that nobody calls. Like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, well, uh, that's not, not often, that it's really true. Well, I, I don't answer my landline, uh, so, because it's public and so, uh, but I'll always get back to people. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll put the links in the, below the below the this video to make it really easy for people to Wonderful. sign up uh, but either way you can search for kathleen fillmore uh k c a t h l e e n fillmore uh just search up on google and it will be the first result you'll find great awesome thanks a lot kathleen my pleasure robbie bye okay bye bye